So um, I thought we'd talk a little bit about intercepts from a graph. Now, the term intercepts means just the point in which a line intersects with your coordinate plane here, your axis. So your x-axis versus your y-axis. The thing is, if you're on an axis, it means you're not doing, you're not really engaging a positive or negative response from the variable that you're not on uh, their axis. So like on the x-axis, for instance, it's not going positively or negatively in the y direction. So if you're looking for the x-intercept, you're definitely going to need to go over to the y value. Remember, it's x, y. It's in alphabetical order. Um, put zero there. And with the y-intercept, you're going to put zero there. You know, no big deal. Now you have to think, okay, well, what exactly is the point of intersect? This is halfway between 4 and 5, so I'm going to say it's 4.5. You could say it's 4.5. However, it's willing to let you write it. Most of the time, it'll, it'll be decimal related. And then down here, um, the y-intercept is negative 1. And that's it. The thing that you have to get before we go into the next section is that the intercept itself is just you're basically setting one of the two variables to zero and then you're solving. So when you get to this type of question, intercepts from an equation, you're going to do the sort of algebraic version of that. Or, you know, where you solve it, what I guess people would consider algebra. Anyway, even though it's vast. I have this, I need to find them. Well, I said before that it's important that you go ahead and say, okay, what's the y-intercept? Well, it's x is 0, and the x-intercept has y is 0. So to find them, all I need to do, if I'm saying, okay, I need the y-intercept, the x is 0, I'm just going to plug in a 0 for my x. And then I'm just going to solve it like a normal equation. Negative 5 times 0 is nothing, so this kind of goes away. In fact, we used to do it to where, on paper, I'd cover this with my thumb, and we'd call it the thumbs method, and you just solve one and then solve the other. So there's my y-intercept. So on my graph, it would be, hold on, let me just go ahead and type this in, since I'm fighting between two systems right now. So down here, it'd be my intercept. For my x, you know, very similarly, I'll just do negative 5x, and in this case, the y needs to be 0, plus 9y equals negative uh, 18. So I'm going to make the y 0. I don't know why I wrote y there. You already know what the equation looks like. So this goes away, of course, and you end up with negative 5 x equals negative 18. I'm going to divide by negative 5 on both sides because, I mean, at this point, you should be able to make these connections yourself. 3.6. Not 36, 3.6. My handwriting is very sloppy this morning. Um, so I'm going to go in, do this, and there it is. So really, that's what you're doing. It's not this overly advanced thing that you can't figure out. It's when you're working a graph, um, you need to set the, if it's the x intercept, you need to set the y value at zero and then look to see where it hits the graph. And then, you know, the opposite for the other one. And in this case, same type of thing. Uh, the only difference is y is over here. So if I need to find the x intercept to this one, I'm going to set y equal to zero. So I'll say equals 0 here, and then I'll just solve for x. And then do the opposite. In this case, that's it, 0 here. And y is pretty easy in that case. It's 13, because 6 times 0 plus 13. And on the other side, you just end up doing uh, minus 13 on both sides. And divide by 6. You end up with negative 2.2, something like that. So that's it. No major headaches. Just set them equal to zero and solve. Oh, I did find a little glitch I add on to the end here. This just this is a Khan Academy thing and not a math thing. I rounded it to negative two point two and then punched it in. It's like you can't do that. So if you end up with I ended up with negative two I was being lazy, is the the reaction to this. I mean I'm not going to lie. It's technically negative two point one six repeating. 
anytime you have that repeating you're dealing with a uh, fraction so you might want to go ahead and convert it if you'd prefer to do that which you could do just by doing negative 13 over 6 okay okay so I'm dealing with the idea of negative 2 and 1 6 that's what I want to do. You could convert it with your calculator if you want to try that. Um, I would imagine that it will accept negative 13 over 6, so let's see. Yep. So just be careful. If you get a decimal, convert it to a fraction. Uh, don't round is what the message they're trying to send. Because really, rounding it sort of takes away the eloquence of the idea that 10 is not divisible by 3, and since 6 is one of those uh, numbers that falls into that idea, it's probably for the best that you just leave it as a fraction. So that's it.